everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. I just wanna do a little bit of a vlog style video today. I'm gonna to show you some new stuff. I got a brand new Julia ring that I can't wait to show you. I'll give you an update on my son. It's been nearly a year since his accident. We'll do some channel updates, and then I have a special look at a Kohl's haul coming up. know that I'm a rep with Julia.com, a small artisan jewelry maker, and they have some amazing designs that I've been so blessed to be able to try. And this month they sent me a cute, cute ring. This is the Unstoppable Love Cat Paul Heart Cut Sterling Silver Ring. So I, I really am curious to know how they knew I loved cats so much. I am a huge cat lover. And this is just, it's a kind of a dainty little ring, although it's very sturdy and substantial. I'll put a photo up here because sometimes it's hard to see detail. Uh, but the main body of the paw is an inverted heart, an inverted heart here, and then the toes, the four toes on top are also in uh, the same pink stone, the Julia pink stone. And then it has a rose gold finish. It's a sterling silver design. So I investigated this ring a little bit before I presented it to you, and I learned that Julia is donating a portion of the proceeds from the sale of this ring to the World Animal Protection Organization. So they've kind of teamed up with a charity, and they offer a variety of styles in that collection. So it's not just this uh, Unstoppable Love Kitty Paw heart-shaped design. There's lots of different options that you can choose from that do have that same donation option that this one does. I definitely urge you to check out this collection. If you are an animal lover, they have the most, the cutest little whimsical style rings. They're fashionable and stylish and cute. And it's not over the top kitschy. It's, it's just something that you could really feel good about wearing every single day. If you use my code, which is T-E-R-R-E-M, one five and i'll put the links below if you expand the description box you'll see a link uh, to the rings and to the site now you know that i wear my julia jewelry all the time i still wear always this wedding set uh, that i have reviewed before a three-piece nesting wedding set that i absolutely love and get tons of compliments on all the time um, I bought this from Julia a couple of months ago, and this is a name necklace. I think this was around $35 prior to the discount. Um, TAZ here in a silver finish. And then recently they sent me the heart-shaped ring, which is in the synthetic morganite. And I have that one here just so that we can compare to this pink stone. This is a proprietary stone by Julia. It's called the uh, a fancy pink stone, okay? And then this is their synthetic morganite. What I'm noticing is that the morganite has a, a more watery appearance. It also has just a little bit of orange mixed in the pink. So it's uh, more of a champagne looking pink as opposed to the true pink of the unstoppable heart cat paw heart-shaped ring here in the bottom. So now I just wanna give you an update on my son. Uh, you have all been with me through this and it's, it's hard to believe that it's almost been a year uh, since his serious motorcycle accident. I think it was July 30th. And then my world just completely stopped. It's like I was on that treadmill and stepped off for about six months. I spent at least three months down there taking care of him after the accident. Uh, just to refresh your memory, he had a traumatic brain injury, a broken hip, um, a broken hip, and all of the ligaments were torn from his left knee. So all the most of the damage was sustained on the left side. He was wearing a helmet; he wouldn't have been here otherwise. But he still had a traumatic brain injury. Um, when I got down there, it was obvious that he he had made it through and survived it. He had just gotten out of surgery. They put three big pins in his hip when I got down to Georgia from Ohio. I got a call from his, um, his commanding officer 
letting me know that he was in surgery, that he had been in an accident, and he had been unconscious at the scene, and then they took him to the hospital. So he really didn't know a whole lot um, until after he woke up from his surgery. So about a week after that, they wanted to do an MRI because they had, they had done a full body CAT scan in the trauma unit just to kind of see what his in, the extent of his injuries were. Um, but it wasn't with contrast and it was just something they did in emergency medicine. Um, so they wanted to get a full MRI to kind of assess the, the, any brain damage that may have happened. On that MRI, they did discover four lesions in the brain. It did not present as brain trauma um, because they were round and the way I was explained that in a, a severe trauma, you get more of a pulling, a striation type of, of, of an injury that's visible on the MRI, but these were more round lesions and in different parts of the brain. Um, initially, they thought it, were, it was brain tumors, uh, and then they thought maybe it was infection. They rushed us to a, a hospital five hours away. Um, it's a bit of a blur to me now, but as a mother, you can just imagine that your whole world does. It just stops, and you, you, you drop everything, and you take care of your children. So they did all the tests and everything, and they ruled out infection. Uh, the head neurologist in that department, uh, Augusta State University, this is the hospital that they sent us to, um, they ruled out the, a brain tumor. He said it didn't, to, to him, it just didn't look like a brain tumor. So they had this big department that consulted on this. They did a spinal tap. They did all kinds of things. They kind of figured that it was MS. And, the, and when we came away from that hospital three days later, um, they, we were kind of under the impression to expect a diagnosis of MS. But MS is not a diagnosis that you can just make from a single test. There's a lot of different criteria that need to be met in order to, to diagnose MS. And so he had the lesions and uh, the cerebral spinal fluid test that they did was negative for the proteins that would be present in cases of MS. However, it's not foolproof. So their only option was to wait and to do another MRI three months later. So in November of last year, he had another MRI and one of the four lesions had completely disappeared, gone away, no trace. The other three remained intact as they were in the original scan three months earlier. Um, no new lesions. And I think that was encouraging to me just because, hey, there's no new lesions. Um, they still could not diagnose something like MS at this time. So they had, they wanted to wait six months to rescan. So this would have been May. Uh, just a couple of months ago, they did another MRI scan on him and um, all three of the lesions that were there in November remained there in May. There was no changes to the lesions, no new lesions. So they're going to rescan again in six months. Um, at this point, it's kind of okay. It is not preventing him from working because he can't work anyway uh, due to the hip, the knee, and the eyes. Oh, I forgot to mention his eye, his eye injury. He damaged the muscles that control or he damaged the nerves that control the muscle around his left eye and even though they healed up some they did not heal up all the way so he underwent an eye surgery a few weeks ago um, it was not successful it did not correct the muscle um, that they were hoping it would now he has to move on to a more aggressive intense eye surgery to correct the muscle um, he can see okay. He's got slight double vision because of the um, the way the eyes line up because of the muscle damage. But he certainly can't work. Um, he could get a prism lens or something and, and wear glasses and probably get along through life just fine. But he really wants to get back to flying if that is an option for him. They're not ruling it out at this point. Um, but he has to completely recover 100%. And I think that's a long shot, but uh, you know, we've seen miracles before. And if getting back to his flying job in the Air Force is something that is in his future, that is meant to be, then I fully believe that that is going to happen for him. It's just gonna take a lot of time. Um, once, you know, because of this COVID emergency, they, um, they postponed all of his physical therapy. And so he has to start over with that. 
Now, just last week, he underwent a surgery to remove the pins from his hip. And I'm going to put up a picture of the pins that they took out of his hip. Three really large, like, huge pins. Um, he broke his hip. It was a full break just below the head of the femur. You know how the head of the femur locks into the hip joint? He broke that right there at the head of the femur. And that's, um, it was a complete break. And sometimes you can get some necrosis. Uh, in other words, the blood supply into the, the top of that femur head doesn't fully recover and you can get some dead uh, tissue and that can cause some pain. So he started in with a lot, oh, he didn't start in with a lot of pain, he just didn't fully recover from the pain. And the doctor said, it's been almost a year, so let's go ahead and remove the pins and see if that makes a difference in his level of pain. Um, it's too early to tell yet, that, yet whether that was successful or not. Um, if the ball joint of his hip dies in the socket, you know, if, if the blood supply was cut off, then um, he'll probably eventually have to have a hip replacement. It is not life-threatening. So that's where we're at with him. Um, when he goes in for this more aggressive eye surgery, he does need my help. He will need help for three weeks after that. Apparently it's pretty intense. He'll be covered in, in a lot of pain. So uh, I plan to go down whenever that is gonna take place. But because of this pandemic emergency, um, they've shut their borders to Georgia because uh, uh, his doctor's in Florida, he's in Southern Georgia. And so they have to wait for that particular doctor to open back up again in order to have this done because it's not life-threatening. So um, the pandemic emergency really has slowed his progress some, but again, we're waiting on that other MRI next year anyway. And so it's, it's just all happening on its own timeline. And I will certainly keep you updated I appreciate your continued prayers and well wishes for us, and uh, I, f I, feel, I feel the love and the healing coming through your kind words and blessings. Thank you so much. So I want to chat with you briefly about wig scams. It never hurts to remind you that there are lots and lots of retailers out there, a whole ring of retailers based out of China that are using my videos and photos and other reviewers' videos and photos, as well as well-known logos from reputable retailers to help scam people into buying their junk wigs. I've always said, if it sounds too good to be true in terms of price, it is. You never ever get what they're advertising. You get some sort of cheap knockoff that you probably wouldn't even wear as a Halloween costume. It's that bad. I've heard absolute horror stories. And there continues to be a, a, a vulnerable group of people out there that continue to fall subject to these scams. I'm thinking that once you get bitten by this, that it's probably never ever gonna happen again because it could happen to anyone initially. So getting the word out there, first of all, that these scams do exist. And secondly, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. You cannot buy a Raquel Welch wig for $20, $30, $40, even $50. It just doesn't exist. That should immediately send up some red flags. Again, if you are seeing my pictures or videos being used for any retailer other than Wig Studio One, it's probably a scam. That should be a red flag, okay? So I don't need tons of emails saying, Taz, I saw this person over here using your video or photo and this person and, and whatnot. I don't need to get those emails from you because I'm aware of what's going on. The bottom line is, you know, let's clear the fog from this. The bottom line is if a retailer is using my photos and video and it's not Wig Studio One, don't buy from them. It's most likely a scam. They, have, they do not have my permission to use my photos and video if they're a wig retailer. The other thing that's going on is that they're using logos from well-known, very reputable wig companies. Wig Studio One, for example. We saw one the other day, it was a website. They were using the Wig Studio One logo, Wig Studio One, beautiful you, and instead of Wig Studio One, they took off the one and put a seven. So it said Wig Studio Seven, 
beautiful you in the same exact. That's causing tons of confusion in the market. Um, we've received emails from people that said, well, we ordered, I ordered a wig from you and it hasn't come yet. Where's it at? And we have no record of anyone ordering. Um, so we know there's a lot of confusion out there in the market. I know that Andrea has her attorneys on this right now and are, she's taking steps to have that, uh, that website taken down. The problem is, and I realized this early on, you could spend all of your time, 100% of your time, trying to get these websites removed, these ads removed, and they just pop up the next day under a different name. I've seen it with my own eyes. I mean, I've had the one particular website, I had them take it down. I spent hours organizing all of the information to send to their money exchange platform called Shopify, and Shopify made them take it down. It was right back up the next day. So I emailed Shopify again. They made them take it down. Next day it was right back up, but they changed a little bit in their name. Just a letter. A letter was different in their name of the website and they could get away with it every single time. So this is a free marketplace. The web, the wild west of the web um, really doesn't have a whole lot of law around this. So until it becomes more regulated, until the FTC steps in, we're probably gonna be dealing with this the rest of our lives. This isn't just wigs, it's clothing. I've seen it. There was an ad for, it was Nora Cora. I saw this most beautiful sweater, I had to have it. And I was looking at it, something just didn't seem right about the website. All the, the, all the feedback was perfect and um, it, it looked kind of photoshopped, the photo of the product. Um, so I went out online to see if I could get some reviews on Nora Cora. I even looked on YouTube and there were several ladies that did videos where it's pretty much a scam. Um, you don't get what's in the picture. One lady ordered a knitted shawl, a, a beautiful, colorful knitted shawl. When it came, it was in the same colors that you see in the picture, but it was a, like a nylon scarf. It was not knitted and that is a huge breach in ethics it is it's a scam pure and simple so obviously I got out of there really quick but that's how easy I am super skeptical about things and I do my due diligence um, but I know that a lot of people don't and so let's try to protect them especially the wig wearers that are just entering the market they may not have a lot of money in their budget and so they're very attracted to these scam sites. And you guys are doing a wonderful job and I thank you so much on behalf of everybody in the WIC community, thank you. You go onto these websites and you, you put comments in that it's a scam, you report them to the proper authorities and I know that that's making a difference. The other thing we can do is just continue to spread the word and talk about it. So the last thing I wanna talk with you about is my Coles haul. I should say Kohl's Clearance Hall. I get so excited about a bargain, guys. Um, I am not a hard person to, uh, to please when it comes to fashion, and honestly, I don't spend a whole lot of money. I get a lot of things from thrift. I, um, I inspect the quality before I buy it, but name brands mean nothing to me, honestly, other than the quality standards that are behind that brand. Um, I don't care that, you know, it could be a Walmart brand. I'm okay with that, personally. If it's cute and it works with my wardrobe and it makes me feel good, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, a designer label. I could care less about that stuff. <laughs> uh, but I do, like I say, love a bargain. Kohl's has always been great. They, they carry a lot of different brands. Um, Apartment 9, Lauren Conrad, they have uh, just to name a few, uh, Dana Buckman, they have Chaps, you know, there's a lot of different um, designs that they have and they all have pretty good quality. I don't have usually have any problem with quality. So on July 4th, and I've, I don't think I've ever went shopping on July 4th, this was just kind of a fluke situation, but my husband and I were going to a um, an out an outside kind of a patio bar grill on Portage Lakes, Ohio. It was a beautiful day, warm, 
and we just wanted to get out of the house. Um, we don't we don't do a lot of socializing among gr lots of groups of people. We sort of avoid that. But when it's outdoors and they're practicing, you know, they're distancing from table to table, we have no problem with that. If I can find some pictures of that trip, I'll go ahead and put them up here. Um, but we had an amazing time. So how I ended up at Kohl's that day, <laughs> we were on our way and we were actually passing a Kohl's on the way that I don't normally go to a whole lot, but I've seen before and they were open. The parking lot had lots of cars in it and that. And that's the first time I've set foot in a retail store really since, uh, since all this started to happen the beginning of February, at the end of February. So it had been a long time. Personally, I don't think I'd been shopping since Christmas. Um, so I hadn't been in a long time and we were passing it and I said, I need to go into Colts. I had uh, like a $5 reward certificate from some online purchases that I had made. And so I stopped and I said, I'll just be a minute. I could have spent hours in there. My husband would have killed me. <laughs> but I went in and I immediately went to the clearance. You would not believe the amount of items on clearance. So the dressing rooms are closed. You cannot try anything on. Um, they had old inventory. They had new stuff coming in, but you could literally look down the aisle and just racks and racks of clearance items in the Mrs. section, uh, the clothing and stuff. So I started, I found my size, I started looking through and I said, I like that, I like that, I like that. The prices were unbelievable. For instance, this little top here, I, I, it's kind of a nautical theme. I just love it. This is um, a chaps. It's kind of a t-shirt material here, nautical theme, blouse sleeves, three quarter, which is right up my alley. And it was $49 retail and I got it for $11. And that's before I got my other discount at the cash register. I have, I have five other tops that I got because, I mean, I think I was in there maybe 20 minutes and my husband's probably, you know, like, come on. Um, and I could have, like I said, I said, God, I could have spent days in there. Um, so I ended up with five tops, walked out of there for less than $50, honest to God. And these are all wonderful tops. So again, this is the chaps, kind of a nautical, nautical theme. And as a matter of fact, I wore something similar when we went to the uh, to the outdoor patio right beside Portage Lakes. All the boats were pulling up to the dock and then they would get off and go in and get something to eat and stuff. And I, it just, the sounds of the water and the boat motors and stuff, it just made me feel human again, honestly. It was, it was a lot of fun. And so we had a couple of beers and so I had a salad and my husband had a sandwich. It was just a really good time. A beautiful day and so here are some other things that I got from my cold haul so before I do I just want to talk with you about my hair this is the hair that I wore when we went uh, to the lakes this is real deal by Raquel Welch in the color shaded biscuit I was stopped three times my husband just shakes his head he's like I'll see you later because we get into these conversations I was stopped three times by three different ladies asking me about my hair the one lady stopped and said, that is such a cute haircut. I love it. Um, and she says, how long have you had that cut? And I said, well, I just bought this last week. And she just kind of looked at me strange and it was, it was just, she just walked right into it. <laughs> this is a wig. What? Um, so I, I just, I just love doing that in the right situation. Sometimes I don't have time to stop and talk, but uh, this was really, really different. It was a pretty casual day. Um, so we talked a little bit and just even in passing, people looking at the haircut and just loving it. And it just went so great with my outfit. It's such a clean, crisp cut and with white pants, I have white pants on and a blue shirt. It was really, it was really a good, good day. So this is another top that I got. Uh, this is a Croft and Barrow. I just love casual clothing, love my three quarter sleeves, light, airy, comfortable, easy to wear. It's just 
so comfortable and light. This is a pop sugar top that you'll find in Mrs. I like it because it completely covers my arm down to my elbow. Little puffy sleeves, little ruffle taper right there. I probably wouldn't match it with these pants, but I think it would go cute with just about anything. And again, this is like a $39 top for less than $10. You gotta layer this one because it's a little see-through. The next two were just little cute little uh, Vera Wang t-shirts. It's got a nice stretchy material, cute designs, short sleeves, cut longer in the back, slimmer in the front. I like to just do a little bit of a tuck in my jeans. It's really cute. Kind of a periwinkle color. And here is the last top. This is again, just a little Vera Wang t-shirt. It's cut just a little bit differently than the blue one um, that I just showed you. It's kind of a dusty rose. Cute, cute, cute. And this one was even less expensive. I think I paid $6 <laughs> for this one. It has a little bit of a, a relief detail on it. Little pattern. It's not too tight in the arm which I can sometimes get because I work out too much. <laughs> but uh, just adorable. So that was it. Those five items out the door for less than $50. I think it was like $47. And I was super excited. I think I'm going to go back here soon. But don't forget about the clearance. Uh, just to let you know that if you do have a Kohl's nearby and you feel comfortable going out to the store, um, there's just racks and racks. I did not buy any bottoms of pants because I have to try those on before I buy them. They just very rarely work for me without trying them on first. Um, and like I said, all the dressing rooms are closed, but there are some huge bargains out there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you soon on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.